Hello. Hey, let's talk about some mobile application development options if you're trying to create programs that run on phones. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach mobile development as part of my job as an instructor at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. So let's go and talk about the options that you have. So really there are three types of language development tools that you can work with when you're talking about mobile development. First of all, there's native code. So this is the um, Android Studio, this is Xcode with Apple, and so you're creating code that is running specifically for that phone. Also, there are ways to create web pages that are called responsive design. And so if you're a good web developer, you should think mobile first, and you might not even have to create an app. And the third category, the most um, involved here, is hybrid apps, using technologies that were originally designed for web pages, but we've adapted them to work on phones. So let's first of all talk about the native apps. So if you're going to work on an Apple or an iOS phone, you're going to buy a Macintosh computer and install Xcode. This is the platform for phones as well as tablets. Xcode is like Visual Studio, if you've worked with that before. It's an integrated development environment. Also, the languages that you can pick from if you're developing in native for Apple, you're going to work with Objective-C or Swift. Now, Swift looks a lot like you would expect in JavaScript or Java. Objective-C, well, it looks like nothing else. Uh, maybe COBOL, I'm not sure. But Objective-C is certainly out of favor for most developers these days. Now, if you're working with Android, you're going to be building a native app as well. And their program that is uh, for developing apps is called Android Studio. So Android Studio looks kind of like Xcode, where you have layouts and then you have coding sections. The languages that you're going to be working with are going to be either Java or Kotlin. And so Java, of course, is super popular. It seems like uh, developers have been working on Java for decades. And so if you've got Java skills, then you're ready to go with Android with uh, learning how the libraries, of course, work, but you're ready to program. Now, Kotlin came along just a few years ago, and apparently it is more efficient. You get right, you shorter code, and it's developed specifically for Android. So the disadvantage, obviously, is you have to learn a new language if you're developing in Android. Now, what are the advantages of choosing a native app over some of the other technologies that we're going to show later? So first of all, if you want to have the best user experience possible for your um, app, then pick native. It's going to run and look like you expect an app to run. It's a real app. It's not some kind of a kludge. Now the next one that you might say is not necessarily how the app looks, but it's how Apple and Google treat you. They can tell when you submit an app to the store um, how, what, how it was built, what platforms did it run on. And uh, I've been told that you get a better uh, rating, you get higher uh, reviews, and more likely to be promoted on their store. They uh, want users to have good experiences. However, the uh, disadvantages are, are pretty big too. So if you are a developer and you're building in native apps, you will have to learn multiple programming languages. So for some of you, that's not a problem. You've already got your languages in web development or other app development, and you're ready to just adapt them to Android. So if you've already figured out how to program in Java, uh, you're ready to go for most of the skills that you'll need for Android. And of course, Swift is very much like either of those languages, so you're probably not going to be uh, choking on that. However, if you are a brand new developer, if, if you don't really know how to code yet and you want to build a web app, then native apps will be the hardest choice of the three. So uh, a big problem that businesses seem to face when they're developing native apps is that they're actually creating double the work for one app. You have to create an Android version and you have to create an iOS version. And that sounds easy if all you're doing is creating a simple app. However, apps can be complicated and require lots of planning. So you're going to have to design your app twice. You're going to have to build uh, two different testing plans for it. You're going to have to deploy to do two different uh, platforms. You might have two development teams that are working on individual parts of your app. And uh, also you have to maintain your app. So when things change on your phone, you grow up to new versions your app is going to have to be modified as well. And so it is double the work of just creating a single platform app. So the second way that you can think of when you're trying to serve your mobile users is just to not build an app at all. Just pick a web page design that is responsive. So I think almost every web page out there these days is using mobile first in their design. 
So you look at a page and you on, on your phone and, and you notice it looks different than the one that you see on your laptop. And your tablet is somewhere in between. These are common web technology design patterns that front-end designers use these days. And so it's not really an app, but it serves the same purpose as maybe uh, what an app would do. Your business has to connect to customers and uh, make your page do both mobile and web. And you've got yourself a solution. So what are the advantages for just using web for mobile? Well, obviously you don't have any extra coding. You don't have to figure out how to create a mobile version of your company app. You just make your web page function for them all. Also, it's somewhat simpler to just create your web page. So HTML and JavaScript might all, all be what your, your web page has involved with it. So I know that most web pages have Java and C Sharp or PHP or Ruby or some kind of a backend that is really doing the, the server work. And of course, that I wouldn't want to discount your, your development there. But you don't have to worry about compiling a web app, do you? And you don't have to worry about publishing it to a store or promoting it. You just make sure that it has good Google results or your um, typical web page SEO and you're ready to make your mark. So what's the disadvantage of using just pure web pages? Well, apps work better. Uh, on phones, they can, uh, a web page can be slow. And uh, obviously it's not available offline. So if your mobile users are out of range, which they frequently are, your web page just won't work. So you're also missing out on an opportunity to promote your company if all you create is a web page. Uh, the App Store gives you visibility. You can attract visibility, you can attract customers, you can get attention if your app does well in the web store or the app store. Also, uh, web pages don't do everything that you can with a mobile app. So think of using your camera, your GPS, your uh, accelerometer, and things that are more uh, native and you will not probably get as good of an experience if all you do is a web page. Now the third category brings us into kind of a, a middle ground between those. It's called the hybrid apps. There are three ways to create a hybrid app. The first one we're going to look at is a web view. The second is compiling an app that will be cross-platform compatible. And the third is using something called JavaScript Core, using JavaScript to create native apps. And so let's take a look at these together. First of all, if you're thinking about a web view app, the technology that's probably at the core of this experience is called Cordova. Apache Cordova is an open source project. And you can see from the diagram that it takes a usual web page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then it does its little black box conversion, and poof, out comes an app that you can put on the web store. It runs on Apple, it runs on uh, Android, and what's that other thing there, that square? Some kind of another third... Um, a mobile tool, I guess. I'm not sure what that platform is. But you can make your cross-platform app using just your web technologies. So the advantages of working with that are that it's simple. If you're already a web developer, then Apache Cordova will make your app uh, out of the code that you've already built. And there's only one code base. So you create one app and it will compile to any of the platforms that are out there. You can publish your app to the App Store. However, it's not going to be as maybe popular as the native apps. You don't have to have an Apple computer, by the way. I think that should be said that if you're, if you're programming an iOS, you're probably going to have, to, well, you, you have to have a Macintosh to run Xcode. So what are the disadvantages? Well, web view apps look like web pages and they're just trapped inside a picture frame. And so they will work offline but they look and feel like a web page. So you're kind of cheating, really, when you're building that kind of an app. Here's an innovative uh, technology. This company called Xamarin has built a nice niche for themselves. They will take a C-sharp program written in Visual Studio and compile it to work with native apps. So it doesn't use Java, it doesn't use Kotlin, it doesn't use Swift, or what's the other? Objective-C. It uses C-sharp, a Microsoft technology, a Microsoft language, and compiles into the native app that you're looking for. So you have one code base to work with, and you have just one language to work with. So the advantages are pretty good. So think of you're creating native apps. You're not trying to shortcut anything and you have used only one code base. That's probably the biggest reason that people would use Xamarin is that they only have one version of their app that they have to compile. So 
They keep track of all the errors in one place, do all the testing in one place, and do all the design in one place. Just one code base. It's a great advantage. And then, of course, it's one language. So C Sharp is a very popular language. Professional developers use C Sharp for everything. And so corporations have already got a good army of developers that can develop a web app, or I'm sorry, a mobile app, using the language they already know. Uh, there's one disadvantage that I can think of is that Xamarin apps uh, compile somewhat larger, sometimes double the size of a regular native app. Uh, that has to do with something of how the runtime libraries are attached to the app. But Xamarin is a good choice and uh, it might work out for you if you're already a C-sharp developer or your company uses C-sharp and uh, his other apps. Now, JavaScript code is the third type of hybrid that we looked at here, or we're going to look at. And really, there's only one big name you have to worry about. It's called React Native. So React is a framework that is used to create web pages. It's super popular. It seems to be like everyone's using React these days. It's really JavaScript with some extra twists in it. And it creates these super fast, responsive web pages that are uh, updated in partial manners. It's, it's really the best way these days to create a uh, web app. That with Angular. Those seem to be the two types of uh, web app technologies. But we take React from the web world and now we have adapted it to the um, native uh, experience in a app design. So it will not just render, uh, React will render objects to a screen, you know, like forms and buttons and things. But you can use the same technology to render native controls to the screen. So React DOM is what you would use with when you're trying to create a web app. React Native is what you use when you're trying to uh, compile for a phone. So the advantages of React Native are that you use the same skills, again, that you did as a web developer. So if you're a web developer using React, you're ready to go and you're ready to learn how to use React Native for mobile. Also, you have a single code base again. You only have one version of your app to test and to deploy. And so React Native is a great choice for cross-platforms. Cross and the key is that the native app performance is there. The apps are really indistinguishable from the native apps, even though they're written in JavaScript. And so it's a great bunch of advantages. And so for the disadvantages, well, I really couldn't think of any. If you're already developing in, in C Sharp with uh, Xamarin, and just keep going with that. Or if you're working with Java and Android, maybe you're fine. But a lot of people are saying, uh, I've already got web development experience. How do I get into mobile? Well, React Native is your best choice. That's the easiest step for you as a web developer to get into mobile developments. There's also another category that you could think of is that game engines such as Unity and Unreal, really the two main competitors in this, in this market, are both able to export their projects to both Android and iOS. And so you can think of there are multiple platforms you can export to an Xbox or to a PlayStation, but Android and iOS are mobile platforms that they can work with. But uh, game engines are not just for games either. If you want to create a virtual reality application or an augmented reality application for training purposes or for some kind of a advertisement, then uh, Unreal and Unity are probably going to work better than trying to build that uh, app on um, Android Studio or something like that. So game engines aren't just for games and they work great with mobile. Now in summary, we have the uh, hybrid choices here as Cordova, Xamarin, and React. So if you want to do some more research on the web, go look at those three names and see what the hybrid choices are. So here's the conclusion of the whole presentation. If you want to do the authentic native experience, your choices are Android Studio or Apple Xcode. If you want to do web design, just stick with responsive web pages, then go learn how to do web design the proper way and it'll work great on your phone. And then of course these three last things with hybrid choices, we've got Cordova, Xamarin, and React Native as your choices. So as I said earlier, my name's Shad, I teach at Grand Canyon University, I teach web design, I teach web development, I teach Am uh, Android and other applications for mobile phones. So if you're uh, looking for a place to study, go check us out at gcu.edu. And we'll see you in class. Thanks.